afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the LTC webinar series. My name is Brian Bates. I'm the Director of Professional Learning for the LTC. I'm joined today by Nicole Zampano, the Regional Educational Technology Coordinator for the LTC. Before I turn it over to Nicole to present today's webinar, just a couple quick reminders. Uh, we are recording the webinar today, and it'll be available on our website uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, you can go under the On Demand section on the webinar page. Uh, that you see over on the left of your screen, ltcillinois.org slash webinars slash, e or slash events slash webinars. And uh, you can check out the recording there or feel free to share that recording link uh, with someone else that you think might uh, find this beneficial. So please make sure that you, uh, you share that as well. Um, if you're interested in professional development hours, you'll receive an email uh, from me tomorrow with uh, the evaluation so you can get those uh, PD hours for attending live today. Also, if you have any questions uh, or want to interact with Nicole at all during the webinar today, please make sure you use the chat feature and change the, uh, the to for who you're sending it to, uh, to everyone, not just the, uh, the panelists. That way everybody can see your questions and we can kind of all follow along with what's going on. So uh, without uh, spending any more time, Nicole, whenever you're ready, feel free to take over. All right, right, will do. And everyone, yes, please absolutely engage in the chat. Um, it's a super fun topic. All right, I'm gonna minimize you guys. So I cannot see any of you right now, um, but welcome. We are here to talk about one of my favorite subjects, um, Gen Z students. There's a lot of great information about these guys. I have a ton to share with you. So I'm gonna talk a little fast and we're gonna try and get through it all. Um, within the 45 minutes, but there's so much to talk about. This could actually be a multi-hour session, but we won't make it a multi-hour session. So why are you here with me today? You are here to get to know your audience um, and not only get to know them, but also try and gather some ideas in terms of how to reach them, because the more you know about how they operate and where they go and what they're thinking, the easier it is to transfer that into your classroom. And at the end, I do absolutely have some tips for you if you are in a classroom with these guys right now. So our Gen Zers, they actually go by a lot of different names, believe it or not. Um, but whatever you do, you know, we're gonna refer to them all day today as Gen Zers. Don't call them millennials. They get very upset when you do that. So this group, depending on the researcher that you're following, the dates are a little bit different, but by and large, these guys are roughly around 10 to 25 years old. So many of you have not only personal kids in that age bracket, but you're also educating kids in that same area as well. After our Gen Zers, our next generation coming up, really our little babies all the way to about 10 years old are our Gen Alpha students and they're being shaped right now by what's taking place. Um, but for all intents and purposes, when we talk Gen Z, we're talking roughly between 10 and 25 years old. They are a very large group. Um, there are roughly about 20, or I'm sorry, 23 million in the US alone, um, but over 2 billion globally. And again, we're gonna go throughout this the whole time, depending on the researcher that you're following, the numbers are slightly different. So what do we know about these guys in general? The key difference between them and their millennial peers who are a little bit older is that the Gen Z students really, they don't remember life without a smart device and being able to get online and get things on demand quickly. They also have had social media throughout their entire upbringing as well. What's very interesting, and there's a lot of research on this right now that's just super fun to explore, within the next five years, they're not only going to be the fastest growing generation in the workplace, but also in the marketplace. And they are already influencing what is happening in terms of marketing. Um, you're gonna see that there's some statistics I have mixed in throughout here, but they're two to three more times likely to be influenced by a brand's social media engagement and when I say social media engagement, they flock to YouTube a lot to interact with their branding. But believe it or not, they will actually check out a product's social media presence between Snapchat, Instagram, um, Twitter, before actually purchasing products from them as well. They are not captivated by um, reward programs and things such as that. So they're not interested in any of that. They are interested and willing to go out and find their own deals. 
they actually, believe it or not, are the generation that influences all other generations above them. You can see here on the screen, you know, I have twins that are soon to be 20. We communicate with them through Snapchat because I have to tell you, they will instantly answer if I ping them through Snapchat, as opposed to even if I text them, they're not always around. These guys also, as a general population of students, they actually influence their parents' spending. So those of you that may have Gen Zers in your house, you may be aware of this as well. So when I talk about the experts today, you're gonna to see me throw out a bunch of different names and I will give you a link to this presentation at the end of the session. So you can come in and go back and check out all the links I have here for you. But there are a lot of people out there researching this group because they are so large and they are so influential and becoming influential both in the workplace and also in the marketplace. So you're gonna see some of these names strewn throughout. When you see Dana Boyd's name, it's not a mistake that it is not capitalized. Dana Boyd does not like her name capitalized and she was like that even before it was cool to do so. She is a, I believe she's the primary researcher still at Microsoft. And back in around 2010, she did an amazing study where for a number of years she traveled around the US and she interviewed teens about what it was like to be a teen in a socially connected environment. So you'll hear more from not only Dana Boyd, but all of these people here. And I'm also gonna go ahead and lump myself in that category because as I mentioned, I have two Gen Zers who are off at college, um, but definitely influence things that are taking place. And so you'll see some of that as well. In terms of Gen Z, they are the largest living generation on earth right now. And again, depending on the researcher, you'll see some people say that they're roughly around a quarter of the actual entire population of humans, but McCrindle actually puts them at closer to 30%, believe it or not. I've actually seen that number go up as high as 32% with other researchers as well. So this is an amazingly huge group. So we're gonna start off with pop quiz. It's gonna look a little different since we're in a webinar here. Um, we're not going to engage in this back and forth. Um, you are more than welcome to throw things into the chat if you, you know, have things that you want to throw in here. But for time's sake, we'll go ahead and get into it. These are some of the um, terminology, some of the things that they say. And these are just basically small phrases. So um, I have left a word out for you. And again, since we're just doing this as a webinar, I'm gonna go through and give you the answers, but try and think to yourself how many of these you can actually get. So here we go. We have squad, goals, spill the tea. That was an interesting one. That is one where basically they just mean that they are gossiping. I gave this talk not too long ago and someone said, spill the beans. And I said to her, you just dated yourself because that's an old term. Now they say spill the tea. This is an older one for those older Gen Zers. The struggle is real. Most of you probably got that. Throwing, shade, another old one. Sorry, not, sorry. Netflix fan, chill. And if you have Gen Zers and you hear them say Netflix and chill, this one's naughty. Watch out for that one. Man crush, Monday. Another oldie but goodie by Felicia. Fear of missing out. Pretty much everyone knows that one. This next one, not a lot of people actually get. Big oof. And then fam jam. And so you might be looking at some of those and saying, what? This makes absolutely no sense. Well, you know what? Let's listen to them in their own native tongue. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Carl. So it seems like every other week, the kiddos of Generation Z seem to come out with new slang terms that quite frankly confuse the rest of us older generations. So the goal today is to learn how to speak some of that Gen Z. today on how to translate some phrases is our favorite spokesperson for the Gen Z kids, my cousin Brock. Say hello, Brock. Brock, say hello. Stop. All right, let's get started.
You guys have the Wi-Fi password? All right, Brock, we're gonna start with some simple ones. Yeah, okay. Hello, how are you? Saw, friends, fam, family, fam jam. It was a fun event. The fest was lit. Okay. Okay. I'm about to leave. I'm finna dip set. Those are some neat shoes. Them kicks are dripping. I would be glad to help. Bet. My favorite team lost. Dudes took an L. My favorite team lost very bad. Dudes got clapped. He seems upset. He little mad. He seems very upset. He big mad. I like this music. That's a bop. I'm not lying. No cap. I'm sorry that happened to you. Oof. That's an interesting statement. Weird flex, but okay. I'm not a fan of these appetizers. These apps are booty. I completely agree with that statement. Facts. I agree. Yeet yeet. Excuse me. Yeet. Wow, that's exciting news. Yeet. Congratulations on your baby boy. Yeet. What does yeet even mean? Yeet is yeet. That doesn't help. It's like when fam comes slipping in with their dripping swag, jamming to some sick bop. And no cap, you know these facts are about to be a litty fresh to death. You're like, oh, I'm not big mad at that booty response. Yeet. I don't get it. Weird flex, but okay. All right, there they are. Um, I have to tell you, I crack up every time I watch this, and I've watched it a number of times because I hear my son say a lot of these terms. Gen Zers will also tell you, they will argue back that there are different dialects, believe it or not, of language for Gen Z. So um, they are a fascinating group indeed. And if you like this video, I would definitely say check it out online. This video alone has had over 2.1 million views. And I believe it came out early in 2019. But just reading through some of the comments of Gen Zers in there, adding additional phrases is fun. So let's get into a little bit of the research um, and what we know about them as well. We also know that there are five defining traits of this generation. And many of these guys will not come at any surprise whatsoever to you in terms of the traits. However, some of the details that go along with the traits are fascinating. So we obviously, we know that they are digital they grew up with blurred lines between technology. So they don't necessarily see work and school and studying and entertainment as separate entities. They actually see them all woven together digitally. This group is the most global generation to date. They not only are influenced, but they do influence each other through technology when it comes to fashion, food, music and other trends that happen around the world. They're mobile and this is a double edged meaning here. So when we talk about mobile in this particular instance, we're talking about movement in terms of homes and actually careers. This is stunning. This research, this one came out in McCrindle, states that they will have a total of 18 jobs over six careers in their lifetime. Um, I've had basically two careers, education and before education. And these guys are looking at a number of different jobs throughout their lifetime. What's fascinating, and this goes to the marketplace, they don't necessarily feel compelled to leave their jobs, but they're not compelled to stay in their jobs, which I would love to eventually at some point find out a little bit more about. We know, of course, they are very social more than other generations, um, their digital identities are being shaped by their peers as well. And they are a very visual group. Almost 1 billion videos are watched on YouTube every single day, believe it or not. Going back to that marketing piece with this generation, marketers are not only reaching them on YouTube, but marketers are starting to change a lot of the way that they cater to these guys by creating lots of science logos and different brands that have to do with images, not necessarily print or word. So I gave you five, I'm gonna give you one more bonus and this is probably one of the greatest bonuses out there. They are the most diverse group, which is fantastic news for all of us. These kids were by and large raised after 9-11 so they've witnessed an African-American president. They've seen female presidential candidates, same-sex marriage, 
gender neutral pronouns. The, guys, this is good news for the world that they are seeing these things and they don't think that there is anything strange about it. So we have that going for us with this generation. So we know obviously they are incredibly skilled when it comes to technology in terms of consumption. They know how to text, they know how to game very well, and they do know how to manage social, social media. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that they know how to use technology proficiently, effectively, or even appropriately when it comes to learning. Today's students we find are public by default and they are private by effort. But most of us, believe it or not, we grew up private by default and public by effort. And this came out of, again, research that Dana Boyd found on her exploration with these kids. These kids, they don't see it as anything strange to be public. What's very interesting though, is they are starting to find new trends where some kids that are Gen Zers are starting to get a little more private, which is good news. That being said, they are also very willing to give up personal data if they receive something that they value in return for that information. We know that people under 18 actually account for an estimated one in three internet users globally. And then this is very interesting information. Our tweens, as we refer to them to, they spend an average of seven hours a day using entertainment media. That's not schoolwork, guys. That's pure entertainment. And then that number increases for our true teens to about nine hours a day. I've also seen statistics that have gone almost up to 12 hours, about 11 hours and 52 minutes a day if they are medium multitasking, which essentially means they could be working on something while they're checking their text and they've got Spotify playing in the background or other things going on. So they're managing multiple screens. Millennials managed roughly around three to five screens um, and they say that Gen Z actually can multitask between five to eight screens at the same time, believe it or not. It's crazy information. This generation as well, they are more likely to be anonymous in terms of their online presence, meaning that they're using their real name, their real identity, they're not hiding behind any pseudonyms or any account names, their digital footprints are increasingly co-produced by peers, believe it or not, that snap images throughout the day and then post them. But I'm gonna put a little asterisk on it. It's not just their peers that are shaping their identity, it's also their parents. Think about how many people, and some of us included, have actually put images of tiny babies and some now, sometimes now even before they're born, ultrasounds and so on, online and social media because we're excited and we want to share that, but we are actually constructing a digital footprint for our children without their consent. Sharenting is absolutely correct, is what it's called. Um, and then also there's a question in there about expanding on entertainment and media. This is using Spotify, it's streaming movies at the same time, it's going to YouTube and it's checking out what's going on at the same time entertainment media also in terms of social media that falls into that category as well. So 2018, we found that 95% of Gen Zers between the ages of 13 to 22 currently has a smartphone. I would almost say that number would be in terms of numbering, I'm thinking age 13, it would actually be younger that believe it or not. They see their phones, believe it or not, as an extension of themselves. They don't see their phone as a tool or a device that is separate. They literally see it as a part of them. So if you're messing with their phone or you're the teacher and you take their phone away and you lock it up, they see it as a personal affront, as if you are actually attacking their being and they don't see it as, like I said, a separate device. 65% of these guys say that they are on their smartphone after midnight a few times a week or more. And believe it or not, 29% say they're on their smartphones every night after midnight. I can attest my kids were two of those kids. I was not one of those parents that actually monitored that. 
um, you know, they had to manage that themselves. And it is fascinating. In the same statistic, they're finding that this is being used. Some high schools are actually heeding this advice, if you want to call it advice, but they're heeding this information and saying, you know what, as a whole, these kids, they don't like to be up early, so they're actually increasing start times, pushing it a little bit later so kids can start school later. And what's also fascinating about this, my daughter, as I mentioned, they're both away at separate colleges. Her university library, believe it or not, is open until 2 a.m., which as a mom, I find incredibly bizarre. But she'll, she'll tell me point blank, and she's responsible and she's up early, but she said, you know what, I work better at night. So her and the girls in the dorm will think nothing of going to the library and starting work at nine o'clock at night and staying till midnight. So that's this generation. What are they doing when they're there? They're doing all sorts of things, but they are most likely going to YouTube first and then also visiting other social media sites. One thing I do wanna point out to you, and this goes with just about all of the research, in big research studies, they're always gonna be about a year or two behind because it takes a long time to gather all of that data to you know, go through it and determine what messages you want to find and themes that come out of that. So do keep that in mind that much of what I'm showing you is roughly around 2018, which is the most current. What's fascinating about that and part of the reason I bring it up to you is this graph is gonna change when they give this same question out in 2020, because notice that this chart right here, this doesn't include TikTok. And while TikTok has not overtaken YouTube by any stretch of the imagination, it is extremely influential. And at this point, it's probably number two on the list in terms of where they are going. So YouTube is our main place. You've heard me mention that a couple times. Let's talk a little bit more about YouTube itself. It's been around almost all of their life. It was actually founded in 2005. Google bought it in 2006 for $1.65 billion, which at the time was quite a lot of money, but they've made their money back, believe it or not. 85% of teens actually say that they consume YouTube content. That's not a surprise. Again, going back to that billion dollar stat because it's absolutely amazing that there's a billion hours, sorry, not dollar. Billion hours of videos are actually watched every single day. So what are they doing? What are they watching, believe it or not? They watch a lot of vlogs and basically vlogs are low budget and highly personal videos. Gen Z, they are not as impressed with celebrities from the way we understand celebrities, movies, TV, and so on. They are more impressed with celebrities, and I use air quotes, that are real people. So a lot of who they flock to on YouTube are people that are close to their age bracket, people that they want to learn from that they feel are real people. A lot of boys, believe it or not, will actually flock to YouTube to watch other boys play video games because they learn tips and tricks and things like that um, to manage their games, believe it or not. There is such a thing as making a living as a vlogger. I would not recommend it, um, but believe it or not, there are some people out there that have actually made a living from this. The highest Paid vlogger, if you were unaware, is Ryan Kajai. He made $26 million in 2019, and he's nine. Ryan, believe it or not, has a YouTube channel where he plays with toys, and he reviews those toys as he plays with it. And he's built up such a following that companies are now going to him and asking him to review their toys. That's where some of this money comes into play. Um, some of the money does come from how often people are viewing his site and how long they stay on the site. So you have to have a number, a certain number of subscribers to your YouTube channel before you can start generating revenue. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a little depressing, but good for him, right? Um, they also, believe it or not, they're doing some educational things on YouTube. They do watch informational videos as well. 80% of the teens 
have actually said that YouTube has actually helped them learn something, which is incredibly positive. And 68% say that it's actually improved a skill that will help prepare them for the future, um, which is fantastic. This chart, we're not going to have time to talk about. I'm going to point it out to you because I'd love for you to check it out um, at some point later. When you click on this link, it'll take you to this infographic. This was created by Mark McCrindle and his group in Australia. McCrindle is a researcher, but they are also a communications firm. So what they do is they research different generations and so that they are able to help influence marketers, influence their audience. This is just a phenomenal two-page infographic that they put together where you can see a little bit of what's taking place with this generation. Notice it's not all education related, um, but again, they're, they're just looking at the generation as a whole. Some of the things that I always love to take a look at are the technology timelines, because it's absolutely stunning to me to think, for example, the iPhone didn't come out until 2008. So the iPhone is, almost 13 years old, that's it. And look at the influence of smartphones today. Another thing um, that I'd like to point out too is back in 2015, the word of the year was no longer a word, it was an emoji. This group, again, remember going back to that stat, that trait that they're visual, they like to learn and they like to communicate with each other through acronyms and also through images like emojis. And then notice again, uh, 2019, the word of the year was yeet. And if I had to put money on it, I would almost say that the 2020 word for this generation is gonna be bet. That's just my prediction. The second page of this infographic, definitely check it out. Again, if you're interested in this, it tells you a little bit about the change for each of the living generations, which is great. And then it also gives you a little bit of insight into their leadership style, some things that have happened to their generation as a whole in society that's influenced the way they think, and then also types of leaders that they are looking for. So one thing that McCrindle talked about as well when he talked about all of that content in that infographic was the change in dynamics for how we view lifestyles. In the 20th century, when many of us grew up, we had three different life stages. We were kids, we became teenagers, then we became adults. They're saying now in the 21st century, our young people today go through many more life stages than we did. They're children and then they move into those tween years. And then notice you're no longer just a teenager, you're a teenager, teenager and then you come into young adulthood. Um, and maybe what I love is the adulthood section that now has four different stages because that tells me I still have new things that are coming my way. What's very interesting about the Gen Z kids that are featured in this whole scheme of things, they're exposed to more at a younger age. Just because they're exposed to more information does not mean that they are mentally mature to absorb and understand and rationalize that information that they're coming across. There is definitely a loss of innocence that these kids are experiencing more than generations before them. And because of that, this generation tends to try and stay younger longer. So a lot of parents, if there's anyone who's got kids that are near that 25 year old Gen Z stage, they're noticing some of those kids they're not trying to grow up very quickly and take adult responsibility and move out and get their own job and pay their own bills because again, they're trying to hold on to some of that innocence that they lost, believe it or not. And I'm not sure if you noticed, um, there was a term on here called kippers. This is a fun one. Kippers refers to kids in parents' pockets eroding retirement savings. So, Another pop quiz, this is a fun one. And again, I wish we were face to face because we'd have some time to go through it a little bit more. But now I want you just to think to yourself as well, when I give you a word, think about the meaning that's associated with this Gen Z word. Our first is savage. If something is savage, believe it or not, it means it's cool. If you are salty, it means you are either rude or angry or jealous. We've got Finsta, which actually refers to a fake Instagram. And this one is just, my non-Gen Z brain makes no sense to me because basically a fake Instagram is technically their real Instagram. 
the vast majority of Gen Zers, and believe it or not, 55% of them have multiple or two, two really, Instagram accounts. One is a public facing account where things are lovely and they're always happy and they always look their best. And then they have what's referred to as their Finsta, which is a small Instagram account that is meant for super close real life friends only. The vast majority of Finstas only have between three to about 15 friends that are actually allowed to be members of that. So that's very interesting to me. If you are thirsty, you are desperate for attention and educators, be real careful when you hear somebody talk, ooh, they were thirst trapping because thirst trapping refers to them posting provocative images of themselves online in order to gain attention. If something is fleek, it is spot on. A darty was day party. I did not know that until my kids went to college. Um, and then bet is, like I said, that's going to be a big one out there. That means everything's cool. It's okay. It's all good. And I've got a bonus for you. Simp. This is another one that they're starting to use a lot. Basically, simp means you are paying extra attention to someone. And I have photographic evidence that they actually talk this way. A couple of weeks back, my son came home for the weekend and him and his girlfriend went to a pumpkin patch and he, believe it or not, posted on his Instagram account, she was the cutest pumpkin in the patch. And you'll notice on the replies, all the girls love that and oh, they're so sweet and oh, that's so great. And his male friends were like, hey, you're only supposed to simp for me. So they actually use these terms. And if Jack actually knew I was sharing this with you, which, you know, I'd tell him at some point, he would give me the okay boomer uh, monogram. And there's your second bonus for this one. If you are unaware of what boomer means, boomer is essentially anybody that's older than they are. So if you get an okay boomer thrown your way, it's not a compliment. And these are super fun. Believe it or not, there was actually a teacher who actually kept a Google Doc of all of these Gen Z slang terms that he heard his high school students saying. Um, so those are super fun to check out. And I put a link to his actual list, courtesy of our friends at BuzzFeed, that you can check out another time. These teens, we know they are absolutely deeply engaged with social media. We know that they know um, how to be on network public network devices, or I'm sorry, network sites. However, Dana in her research, when she traveled around the US and talked to them, found that they must, she found that they tended to fend for themselves in terms of understanding the technology and how it really works. So definitely keep that in mind, especially in terms of information and how it spreads. Guys, I know this is a huge issue for all of us as adults in general, um, but we have to be teaching media, liter media literacy all the time. We're not saving it for the media specialist or the librarian. Everybody needs to be addressing it, even those of you that teach littles. That being said as well, this is Media Literacy Week. How they're feeling about social media overall. In general, they're feeling more positive about it than they are negative. For me personally, I actually feel the greatest about that 45% in the middle that basically say there's no positive or negative effect on them. I think that is really important because it means that it is not dramatically influencing them. All right, we're gonna watch just about two minutes of this one as well, get a little bit more of our Gen Zers in there. Okay, so go ahead and lift up the box. You have four minutes to dial that phone number. That's it? That's, That's it. it. With that phone. Wait, so you have to push uh, it. Right? Kyle, move your butt over. I don't want your butt in the video. Fingers look, 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 there you go. Look. It's all the way from here. Yeah. Oh no, zero's all the way over. Oh, How do I restart? Seven. Yeah, seven. Another zero. 
Or do you go all the way around back here? Wait. Dude, that makes sense. Wait. Ah, yeah, yeah, we got it, yeah. we got it, we got it. Yeah. All the way around. Like that. Eight. Uh, seven. No, zero. All the way around. Three. Oh, baby. Eight. Five. Zero. All the way around. Okay, so I'll give you a hint. Your zero is correct. <laughs> Every other way you're doing it is incorrect. All right, I always got to stop, but I would love to hear the mom laugh because it really is kind of comical. Um, spoiler alert, they do actually figure it out at the very, very end, but they never truly figure out that they actually have to hold the phone up and keep it up the whole time. They think that slamming it down actually resets it. I gave this presentation not too long ago to a district and some of the teachers said, hey, we need to make this one of our middle school challenges. And believe it or not, um, these things are still out there. We have a rotary payphone in our garage. What's interesting about this to me is not only is it comical, but if these kids were not being videotaped, they would actually end up going directly to YouTube to figure out how to do this. They would not spend the four minutes that the actual video shows trying to figure this out and problem solve it. They want their answers quick. They don't want to work too hard for them, so they would automatically go to YouTube to see if someone else did that. They don't need us to learn, guys. They are the epitome of who to go to co learners. They are self determined and they won't wait for us. But that being said, even though they don't need us to learn, they definitely need us to help them with interpretation. So, again, this goes back to that media literacy piece. We have to focus on making sure that we're helping them interpret the information that they are finding. We know life is absolutely 100% easier and quicker for these guys. However, it is much more difficult for them to navigate psychologically and emotionally. Um, in 2019 alone, there were over 400, there were 419 mass shootings that occurred in the one year alone. Of those, I wanna say, depending on who you read, between 25 to 45 actually took place on school grounds. So metal detectors, lockdown drills, um, they have grown up with this and this is their norm. So we do need to be cognizant that they are carrying some of these emotional and psychological burdens that many of us did not face. Right behind them are our Gen Alphas. Um, they are coming in strong. 2.5 million of them are born globally. These guys are gonna be the most formally educated and most technology supplied generation out there, even more so than Gen Z. What's very interesting though, is I've actually heard the phrase used that they're gonna be the most formally educated, but they're going to have the least amount of first person experience when they enter the marketplace, um, which is very interesting information. In terms of the pandemic, um, fantastic quote that I've heard from multiple people, but I don't know who it's attributed to, that basically during this pandemic, guys, we're all in the same storm, but we're not in the same boat. This is affecting our students in many different ways. Using that same storm analogy, some see this as just a light sprinkle. It's just an annoyance. It's going to go away. Where others, this has been a downpour for them. They might have seen their parents furloughed or some of their lifestyle, obviously, we know their social life, but in terms of their home life with their parents and their economic situation change. And then for some, this has been just a flat out hurricane that has impacted their family based on people that are actually getting sick as it is. Not too long ago, believe it or not, just in August, um, Common Sense Media and SurveyMonkey got a hold of some kids, roughly around a thousand of them, a little bit less and actually gave them a survey to figure out what's going on in terms of how they're feeling with the pandemic. Um, they said they found out kids absolutely would prefer to be in school right now. And I put an exclamation point behind that because hopefully many of you are gonna use that to their, your advantage when they come back full time because they're there and they complain when they're in front of us, but now they wanna go back. But that being said, they have also basically said they don't necessarily think it's safe to go back not only from a COVID perspective, but many of them are concerned that their schools don't have the capacity to keep them safe. 
in terms of having the proper PPE, the proper cleaning and so on. And believe it or not, they are concerned about falling behind. So these are things for you to keep in mind as you go. McCrindle has also done a little bit of research on the effect of COVID on Gen Alpha. Um, I'm not gonna read these all to you, but the three that I pulled out are three that I think are very optimistic and I'm excited about this information from the data. Believe it or not, by the time they hit the workforce, they are going to expect flexible working conditions. They are not going to want to go and sit at an office desk in a cubicle and have that be the only place that they can work. They'll absolutely be more resilient, which is phenomenal and the world needs more of that. And believe it or not, they're saying they actually think they're going to have a stronger desire to travel and see the world, which is incredible. So there is information here for you if you would like to read more about the effect of COVID and its impact with kids. And I am gonna show you one more video. I'm, I'm very cognizant of the time. Um, but I do want to show you this in full because this is an incredibly impactful video. That's probably one of the most impactful things that you can see in terms of how the pandemic has affected the kids. Liv actually did that video as a school project, believe it or not. Um, she released this in June of this year. So roughly around four months ago, it's had 1.1 million views so far. Um, for me personally, what stood out was 
I didn't quite get it until I saw the Google Classroom and all the to-do. Liv also did go on to say, this is not necessarily her personal experience. She is very cognizant of the fact that there are many more people that have it much more difficult than she has. And she makes sure in her YouTube liner notes to include information um, about the Youth Mental Health Resource Hub. So I would highly encourage you to please make sure that students that you service are aware of that as well. And if anything, this to me is an amazing jumping off conversation starter to have with your students to see how they are being impacted. All right, they're watching us guys. They don't always necessarily see from us what they need to see in terms of how they should respond to things that are happening. I'm not gonna read this to you. However, um, definitely check this out later. Strategies to lead during disruption as adults. Um, probably the most powerful piece on here is also to teach them to say yet. So when they say things such as, I'm not good at essays, I'm not good at essays yet, or I'm never gonna learn this. I'm not gonna learn this yet. Um, so that's very powerful as well. We're gonna skip through this pop quiz just for time's sake. These are some other Gen Z things from our old friends at BuzzFeed. Um, and that's a ton of information that I gave you. I do wanna wrap up with giving you some quick tips in terms of what the research says about how they learn. So give me about three more minutes of your time and I'll get you guys out of here. There's an upside for sure. They bring high expectations to their learning environments. They value social justice and impacting the world. And they are very pragmatic in the way that they approach life to learning, which is good. They absolutely realize that life is not always going to treat them fairly. And they are not afraid to do hard work if they actually believe in what they are working toward. And probably important to them, they see themselves as loyal, compassionate, open-minded, and responsible. In terms of what they tell us to do with them when we're educating them, Believe it or not, sad to say, the research indicates that you have eight to 10 seconds to grab their attention before they divert their attention someplace else. You need to be organized, you need to be prepared. Good advice is to front load lessons. So before you have them in front of you face-to-face, -face, send them your presentation and say, read this, check this out before we get together. They're mobile and on the go, so you wanna address them that way as well. They are very visual as we've learned and they also value storytelling. So make sure you are incorporating not only videos and visuals for them, but also giving them stories about people that are very similar to them as well. They do struggle with soft skills, that's no surprise. Um, so because of that, please make sure that you are teaching them those harder oral skills and that look in, in the eye, even if they're looking at the little green button like I am right now on the computer, teach them that because they need that stuff. They're also very used to us solving their problems. So make sure that you are giving them responsibility and not doing all the work for them. We know that they're gamers, so incorporate that into your lessons and they're also very global. So if you have the ability to tie something you're doing with them to some sort of social justice, peace, please do because they're going to respond to that. They want quick answers to problems. So sometimes don't give them quick answers and make sure that you are giving things that they cannot simply search for and find the answer for quickly. They need us to build up that stamina piece in them. And then finally, they like to work alone. They're not always collaborative because remember the hudagogical, they're self-determined. But that being said, you still wanna put them into groups and force them to learn how to learn with other people or work with other people, but just make sure that they are small groups. They wanna be heard by and large. There's a number of links here for you um, of different things that just express Gen Z and how they wanna be heard and what they wanna see in terms of technology and education. Um, use social media also to reach them. We have our representatives of our government trying to reach them through social media. So you should be doing that as an educator as well. And then we'll wrap it up um, with a few different things. Again, this is all stuff you know, but in terms of job skills that companies are going to be looking for, keep these in mind as you are educating your Gen Zers. Final thoughts, I've got three for you and then we'll get you out of here real quick. The first one, 
Our children absolutely know more than we think they know, but believe it or not guys, they know less than they think they know. This is where that media literacy piece comes in. So please make sure that you're addressing that. Digital life and life in the 21st century, I don't need to tell you this in 2020, is not linear or sequential. Um, these students, they don't see a difference between online life and real life. They are referred to sometimes as digital, meaning that they live in the online realm and also in real life interchangeably. And then finally, probably the best one yet, we're the first generation of educators with the power and the responsibility to shape how these future generations are going to use technology to be good citizens. So I'm sorry I talked fast. Um, I appreciate you being here with me. I'll go ahead and put a link to the slide deck in the chat window. Um, and thank you for spending part of your Wednesday afternoon with me to learn about these fascinating creatures. Awesome. Thanks, Nicole. I think that the, uh, yeah, that's the only question in the chat right now that you have any, it was just putting the link in. So I see you did that. If anybody else has any other questions, please feel free to uh, throw those in the chat right now. Um, I, you'll also receive um, an email tomorrow, follow-up email for attending. And I'll, I'll make sure to, uh, to toss that link in there as well for those of you who attended. So you can check that out also, but um, feel free at this time to, to ask any other questions you might have. Other than why did you go so fast, Nicole? I could talk about them all day. There's so much to talk about. <laughs> awesome. Well, it looks like a lot of uh, a lot of thank yous and, and good infos. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up for the day. Again, Nicole, thank you. And thank you to everyone for joining. Uh, this recording will be up on the website uh, probably within an hour or so. So uh, thank you very much. And hopefully everyone will join us again, uh, again soon. Thanks all. Take care.